Hello and welcome to Got Clutter, Get Organized, the conversation. Today it is just going to be the two of us and I'm going to be sharing with you some strategies on how to free yourself from clutter. It's going to be five strategies because as we, of course, those of us in the U.S. move towards Independence Day that we celebrate on July 4th, I thought this would be a great time to just kind of share some ways that we can really free ourselves from all the stuff that could be holding us back from either starting that business, having that organized life, or just, you know, really surrounding ourselves with the things we love as well as use. So before I share those five strategies, I wanted to just kind of share a few things with you. Consumer goods accumulation. The average American has over 300,000 items in their life. We're talking every knife, fork, and spoon, every pen and pencil, every tool, all the little gadgets and the accessories to the gadgets that we have. That's one. Storage trends. 10% 10% of Americans have some off-site storage, and that can average about $1,100 a year, which that adds up over years. And if you have more than one, you have several, just think about all that money each and every year you are spending on stuff that you probably will never use again. Our spending habits, you know, we continue to consume and buy a lot of things. That a lot of times, because 80% of the stuff we keep, we never reference again. So we continue to buy things and continue to accumulate things. Impact of clutter. Now, this is mentally because they're saying the impact mental health and productivity, and that's what clutter does. But studies suggest that excessive clutter, and I'm reading this, can lead to stress, anxiety, and decreased focus, indicating that the clutter could improve your quality of life and how many of you out there just don't have the focus. You're feeling overwhelmed. You're feeling anxious. And then the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is annual disposal. Now we've got spring cleaning, the fall cleaning. We get rid of a lot of stuff. And of course, unfortunately, the way we get rid of it is not always being responsible. But not only that, but we get rid of stuff and we bring stuff back in the house. So I just wanted to kind of just share some of the things that kind of, you know, really impact our needs and our reasons behind just decluttering. But I also wanted to give you some five ways on how you can tackle it in your life. So the first thing is set some clear goals. And your clear goals could be what you really want to do. Do you want to be able to have an organized entryway? Do you want to have an organized garage? Why do you want to have an organized garage? And sometimes we have to think about the why. I want to be able to park my car in a garage. I want to be able to come home and not feel frustrated or overwhelmed because I see the pile of shoes. I see the closet that's not organized. I want to have a smooth morning routine so that I can find things just in my bathroom or my kitchen in the morning as I prepare for my day. But then also, you have to make sure you sort and you purge. Because as I said earlier, 80% of the stuff we keep, we never reference again. We wear 20% of our clothes 80% of the time. So begin to look at not only your life now, but also where you go. Because a lot of times we have stuff in our homes and our lives that were good for a different season in our lives. You know, when you're in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, plus 50. Or sometimes when you starting out single, then you're in a marriage partnership. Then you, of course, you may get a pet. You have children. And then, of course, you may be in that season in your life where the kids are gone off to college. You're starting to downsize. You may be retiring. Begin to look at where you are, but where you're going to be within the next few years. Do you need all of those things in your home and your life? So that's important to do and be honest about what you're going to use. Maybe you used to bake a lot, but now you really don't do that. I remember working with a client and she had this, all of these heavy appliances. Her and her husband were older. The kids were out the house. I'm like, do you bake like this anymore? She said, you know, actually we don't. So sometimes it's having to ask those questions. Also, I asked another client. She had, she was keeping the high chair that her daughter was in. And I said, you know, that is first of all old. And it's not even safe anymore. 
because it was one of the metal ones that's way back. And I said, because knowing the two of you, I know you're going to buy something brand new when the grandchildren come. And of course, you know, how much luggage do we actually need? You know, really, in reality, we may need at least three pieces. We need something, maybe a small tote, a, a, a smaller size with rollers, and maybe a bigger size. Do you need 10 pieces of luggage? Because really, do you need all of that? So that's the thing. Then organize. Organize according to how you and your family function. If you come home and take your shoes off by the door, consider a shoe rack. Or if you like to see things visually on countertops, create containers, things like that, where things are accessible, but they're also contained. Maybe you and your family, you have a lot of accessories, whether in the family room, in the living room. Then think about containing all of those things so you can find them the first time. And then also making sure that you organize those safety items like the batteries as well as the candles so you know where to get them as well. And then if you're a craft person, you know, organizing those things, not only so you can find them, but also so that space where you create is clutter free because then you won't be distracted and you'll be able to allow those ideas to flow. And then, of course, Making sure you have a routine. Routines are very important. Routines are simple. You take something out, you put it back. You open something, you close it. And that is basically a routine. That's one routine you can do every day. You take something out of a drawer, you put it back. You take something off a shelf, you put it back. You take something out of a closet, you put it back. But also those routines. Maybe once a year, go through all of those important documents and making sure everything is up to date, making sure whatever tax records you need to keep are organized, making sure the ones that you don't need anymore are discarded and shredded. But also seasonally, we do that with our clothes. But what about the things in our home? Because a lot of you decorate. So making sure that you really kind of purge and get rid of things, make those routines and get the kids involved the end of the year, during the holidays, when you're going to be bringing new things for them in the house, take, allow them to look at the things that they're not using and donate to another child. And then, of course, last, just really being mindful of really what we bring in our homes. Because, of course, if you bring something in, definitely take something out. But really, truly, because one of the things I had to be mindful of is, you know, everybody but tell me, Janet, you got to buy in bulk. Buying in bulk saves you money. And it does. But when buying in bulk impacts your space, then you have to rethink it. Because I would buy those huge um, packs of paper towels, not having anywhere to store them because I'm in a small space. But then when I started just buying the six pack, the six pack saves me money. It may not save me as much money as a bigger pack, but it's still saving me money as if I want to buy. So when I buy the six pack, I have a spot for it. But if I have to buy like the 48 pack, I don't have any space for that. And granted, yes, in the long run, I may be saving money, but it's causing clutter in my house because now I have to find a place to post it and put it, I should say. So think about those things as well when you are actually really thinking about being free of clutter, being mindful of what you bring in, you know, being mindful of how many clothes you have in your closet. Again, we wear 20% of our clothes, 80% of the time. Looking at your lifestyle. Yes, you may have worn suits in the past, but now presently, do you really wear suits anymore? You know, a lot of people work from home, they're remote work, they're hybrid work. So that their attire has changed. So, I hope you find these tips helpful. And of course, below is always the link to the entire episode. And of course, make sure you subscribe and click the bell for reminders to always stay up to date on what we share on this channel. So continue listening to the full episode. But until next time, you have a clutter-free day. And thank you so much for joining me.